Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast. Now, today I wanted to talk to you about how to stop reacting. I have covered this in other shows here and there, but I wanted to give this topic its own episode because it's such an integral part of breaking the drama cycle and because it can be so hard to do. So first, let's talk about why narcissists try to provoke others in the first place. There are a few reasons for that. One is that they're bored. Now, that sounds like a lame reason, but these types of people don't experience boredom the way the rest of us do. Boredom is experienced by them as incredibly oppressive, even crushing or, like, scary, and they will do anything to escape that. If it means they have to provoke a fight with you, they will do so with no problem. It's more important that they feel better than it is to respect or care about your feelings. That's, of course, the main theme when dealing with narcissists in general. When it comes down to choosing between you and themselves, they will choose themselves every time. And attached to this reason is also the fact that many of these types of people have impulse control problems and a complete lack of respect for other people. That leads to whatever they think just sort of coming right out of their mouth. So that ends up with constant arguments and problems with other people. Another reason is that they're really hypersensitive to uh, real or imagined criticism. So many times they don't actually feel that they are provoking the incident. They actually feel that you have done something to them and they are defending themselves. This often leads to circular arguments that consist of no I didn't, yes you did type of dynamic, you know, where the bewildered partner spends hours trying to explain to the narcissist that the narcissist misunderstood or is mistaken. Nothing can ever be solved in these situations because they insist that you have bad intentions or, or dastardly motives, you know, and, and you can't prove that you didn't. I, I, who could? How can you prove that? You can't. So there's no reasoning with this. That's how they want it. I mean, what they feel is how it is. They feel you had a nasty motive, so it becomes a fact that you did, and you will be punished for that. It doesn't matter how much proof there is to the contrary. It will be ignored or it will be twisted against you because the truth is they don't want to believe you anyway. These people fit the facts to their feelings rather than fit their feelings to the facts the way that a non-personality disordered person would do. They want to be the victim because it's the only way they can escape the feeling that they're so horrible. If a person is the victim, they cannot also be the bad guy. That is basically the crux of their position. This is also why they never admit that they're the abuser, that they are the one abusing the other person. If they admit the other person is a victim, then that means the narcissist is the bad guy. That is absolutely intolerable for them. So they automatically interpret everything as something bad against them. Therefore, they are always the victim and never the bad guy. This is also why you are always the bad guy. In their world, there is a hero and a villain, a victim and a bad guy, and you are always going to be the bad guy. That's just how it is. A third and very powerful reason for provoking other people is that narcissists like provoking the emotions of other people. They believe it means that the other people care, you know, in one way or another. They truly do not care whether they are given negative attention or positive attention as long as they're getting attention. If they cannot be the best, then they'll be the worst. If they cannot make you love them, which they do believe they can't do regardless of how much you tell them that you do love them, then they'll make you hate them. At least then, they're still important. They matter. You care because you're reacting. You're feeding their ego, which demands itself to be recognized. Narcissists are psychic vampires, so this is very, very important to them. And however far they have to take it to get to that, that's how far it's going to go. They are emotional leeches with no sustaining emotions of their own. They have to, to cling on to yours. Now, perhaps the saddest and most awful of all the reasons that narcissists provoke people is because they are sick, miserable, disordered people who 
need to lash out. They hate you. They hate themselves. They hate everything. And they just cannot hold it in anymore. The world isn't fair. They were given a disorder that they did not ask for. They're miserable and unhappy and afraid and they're angry. And it's not fair that everyone gets to be happy when they don't. So they actively try to ruin things for other people. It makes them feel better. You know, maybe they're not happy, but now neither is anybody else. It makes them feel powerful and less vulnerable. It's like a drug for them. They are literally addicted to your pain. It's the only thing that makes them feel better. So now that we know the why, let's talk about the how. How do you stop reacting to this constant onslaught and barrage of emotional extortion, provocation, hysteria, and blows below the belt? Well, you just stop. That's it. It's harder than it sounds, but it's also easier than you think. See, part of the reason that people react the way they do in situations is that behaviors become patterns. The reason why we're doing that is because it's what we're used to doing. And also, especially in high emotion or dramatic situations, which there always are with these types of people, your body starts to think that this is how it's supposed to function all the time. But it got trained into that and it can be trained out of it the same way. It's all about making different choices. That is what you have to focus on here, your choices. Because you cannot control your narcissistic loved one or a coworker. They cannot even control themselves. You have no hope of controlling them. You can only control yourself and that's what you have to do. Just stop reacting. The episode of my show about how to deal with narcissists explains a method called the gray rock method and that is essentially what we're talking about here. You become a gray rock and you react how a gray rock would, which is not at all. It goes in steps. First you control the behavior, then you control the emotion. If your reaction is to start yelling, stop yelling. If your reaction is to start crying, stop crying. If your reaction is to call names or insult the narcissist back, stop doing that. You're still going to feel the reaction inside of you and it's still going to want to come out. Your body is trying to do what it's always been doing, but you are in control, unlike the narcissist. The narcissist does not control your reactions. You do. Take a deep breath and tell yourself, I'm not going to react. That is what the narcissist wants and I'm not going to give it to him. Now, this really does work. Ignore the provocation by not responding at all if you can. And if you can't, such as you're having a necessary communication with the narcissist, simply assert your point or answer the question and nothing else. Don't acknowledge the insult or the guilt trip. Just let it go. If you cannot stop yourself from having a reaction, leave the room. And by not having a reaction, don't have a reaction at all. Don't make a face. Don't sigh, don't take a deep breath, no reaction. What would a rock do? A rock wouldn't do anything. The narcissist is trying to control and manipulate your feelings, but it can only work if you let it work. I'm going to repeat that. The narcissist is trying to control and manipulate your feelings, but it can only work if you let it work. They have no power that you did not give them. You can take the power back and reclaim control over your life, your mind, and your emotions. This is how you do that. Now, after you have consistently stopped reacting, you're going to notice the narcissist will ramp up the abuse and the provocation because they're trying harder to get you to react and to upset you. You just have to keep ignoring it. After you've done that for a length of time, you are going to notice that your body and mind no longer respond the way that they used to. You will not feel the reaction inside you anymore, and this is where you want to be. If you crack occasionally, don't beat yourself up. These people are masters at manipulation. The important thing is to react less and less until you don't react at all. And remember, this is for all you empaths out there. We all know narcissists are champion guilt givers and empaths are champion guilt takers. So I'm speaking directly to you. This does not mean that you don't care. It means that you are asserting control over your own life, your own mind, and your own emotions the way that healthy people are supposed to do. This is not wrong for you to do. It's right. And it has nothing to do with how much you care about the narcissist, no matter what they say. For once, it's not about them, it's about you. 
You don't have to apologize for that, and you don't have to explain yourself. I hope this has helped clear up how to stop reacting and given you some techniques that you can use. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast. That's me, the little shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.